call the Copley Trust meeting to order at 6 o'clock. First on the agenda is approve the minutes of April 4th, 2022. We have a motion by Gloria and a second by Dick. Is there any further discussion on these minutes? All in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Minutes are passed unanimously. Number two, Andrew Bomier. Is that correct? Yes. Welcome, sir. Thank you. Community Bank Trust. Yes, sir. I'm here with David Bottle as well. Welcome. Um, thank you. I saw statements going around, but I did lose our own paperwork. Yeah. I wasn't sure. It looked like they were handouts that we should we should have copies of. Okay. Thank you. This is pretty fancy. Thank you. That's all right. It's we, nice. We weren't aware we were going to be part of the overall meeting, so I didn't bring copies to the entire room. Okay. Um, I have two more. Thank you. I'm going to take care. Two of them. How would you like us to present? Can we stand up here? There's a microphone yes. Yes. here. Just be loud. Be loud. Be loud. <clears throat> There may be a lot of people listening virtually. So Lost that's millions? No. Could be. Could be trending. You never know. Well, we're good. Well, thank you for having us. We appreciate the opportunity to come and speak. Um, it's been some time since David and I have been able to present to the board. We attempted a meeting last year around this time, but it didn't go so well with our new COVID protocols being online and virtual. But uh, uh, again, thank you for having us over. Um, I've been with the Community Bank for a couple of years now. David's a, a long tenured employee. You want to come up, David? Well, sure. Um, David's been involved with the Copley Trust for quite some time. I'm getting up to speed with it, but again, it's been almost two years. Um, really, we want to answer what our question is. We have a full agenda here in this book, and we don't intend to go through every page, but what is most important that you'd like to speak about today? Top of, you know. Well, what I had suggested was uh, to talk about the two funds, how they are different, what they can be used for or not used for. Yeah. And then uh, uh, also to address the request from the Copley Country Club about holding all the requests until their request has been financially met. Right. Yeah, well, we had a situation where, you know, the fund, you know, usually produces an amount that we're, we can spend. And that hasn't been the case this past, as you know. And um, But we had a request and we're kind of faced that we can't really approve it or we can't even approve it contingent on having uh, an amount of money we can spend again. We were kind of at a quandary and I believe, I don't know if it's Gloria or Dick that suggested, you know, having a more okay. comprehensive answer to how we deal with that. Let's take um, page two of the Let's see here. Okay. Uh, fifth tab in. Just want to start a big high level trust terminology. Just so we can understand what 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 uh, in, in terms of type trust language is what we're looking for in the page here. So it's like the fourth or fifth tab in. Yeah. What's the what's the header on it? Let's start trust. Oh thank you. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So in, in, the, in the trust world, there's the concept of principal and income. So principal is referred to as principal or corpus, and that's effectively the initial funding of the trust plus any appreciation of those dollars. So if the trust was funded, I saw an earlier statement maybe 10 years ago that said a million dollars in the account. That was the corpus. It's up to 1.7 million now. That $700,000 gain is part of the principal. It's not available for distribution. Um, the income of the trust is going to be whatever the financial assets generate in terms of interest from mutual funds, interest or dividends from the mutual funds. So on a monthly basis, the underlying assets in these portfolios are spinning off dividend payments, be it in a bond portfolio or an equity portfolio. And that is what is distributable under the trust agreement. So the income earned. If it owned a piece of property and, it was, and there was rental income, that would be distributable. In this case, there's no rental income any longer in this portfolio. Cap, I'll just jump in. Yeah. From, from a historical standpoint, there are two accounts. So you have the, the main account and then this income account. That income account was used to grow and invest funds as well because money wasn't being spent on a normal basis. 
for many, many years, you had this income account that was both cash plus stocks and bonds, more conservatively invested in the main account. And so what's taking place is that more recently, especially in the last three years, you've had distributions made um, from that income account that was really there to be spent, but hadn't been spent. So you had both principal and main account for a number of years that was also just growing. So what's taking place is you have the main account generating income, spinning it off into the smaller account, but that dollar value today is not going to support, um, you know, a distribution need this is substantial for 2022. So that, I know there's a lot packed in there just now, so, um, you know, we'll, we'll just continue on, but I just want to make sure that it's clear that that income account could have been spent year one that the trust was funded. It wasn't. Instead, it was accumulated, invested, and it's been spent down um, in the last three years. And, and the trust document does allow to accumulate income. It, 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 the language is clear that if there's a bigger project that, that you'd like to accomplish, you can accumulate income over a period of years to get to that dollar amount. So perhaps that took place. I, in another section in here, I've outlined what money has been spent on over the last three plus years of 2018. Um, but we had, a, we had a big spending year last year that exhausted the income fund. And just to note, quickly on some other you know, capital gains. So you know, we constantly are monitoring the portfolio and trading. The, we, we rebalance the portfolio periodically, moving between stocks and bonds. Any gains or losses? that are realized due to that trading activity is part of the corpus. Again, if we sell a stock and we make a gain on it, that's not income. It's, it's part of the corpus of the trust. And then and in terms of cash, you'll, you, I think you also have the client statements from the client reporting. There's two line items. There's income cash on it and there's principal cash. Income cash is the accumulation of interest and dividends that have been paid out of the mutual funds. Principal cash would be if there were any, any new contributions to the portfolio, new corpus, or principal realized from the trading of stocks or bonds. But those are two distinct things. We can distribute income cash, not principal cash. And, and that's for the trust document. And then just the distributable income. Um, a lot of trust documents that you are to distribute all income, and that normally means net of fees. In this case, in your portfolio, do the structure of it, you're actually paying out the gross income, not the debt income. income. The fees are coming out of the corpus of the account. So you're getting the biggest income distribution you can get out of the trust. Any questions on that? Okay, so the next tab is just a quick look at what we've spent out just in last year since 2021. You're all familiar with the projects you approved, so I'm not going to go through them. But it was a total of $144,000 was paid out in 2021, and that's what exhausted the income fund. So that's we're now in that rebuilding, reaccumulating phase of you know letting that money grow into the income fund. That's not to say you have to let it grow. There's $15,000 in there now. You can distribute that, but if you have a bigger project in mind, it may take time to accumulate. Do you have any questions? So yeah, that was the papers that you were <coughs> flying around with. Is it in this? Everything is in there, I'm sorry. Yeah, um, I can't find it. So what page is it? Oh, um, I'm looking at what it says this for this. Yeah, it's the next page after the trust. Yeah. You got it. So there's a <laughs> so that's the that's the uh, history of just uh, to 2021 to, to year to date. And uh, the, 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 one, the one thing we would highlight is that, um, oh, I apologize, I do have a, an error here. The second from the bottom where it says W. Gardner, that <coughs> told me hospital. I, I did a copy paste error there, but that $30,000 came out of the principal account, the main account. That was the one distribution we've done from the main account. I think one of the questions we had that was brought up is, could we, uh, are we able to set aside money for a project that costs more than what money we have to spend? And it sounds as if you're saying yes. That's the whole purpose of the income fund. So the, the main account with the $1.7 million is we have an automatic transfer happening to all the every month that wants the income is swept from the main account to the income account where we accumulate income. And whatever's 
in that in income account is what is available for distribution. So it can't be set aside and promised for a project that might take place three years from now? Well, that was a, it wasn't that an issue of how the trust is set up and like the, the, by, the, the bylaws of the trust? The, the trust provides that you are allowed to accumulate income and you, you as a board are, you set the policy and what, whether you're going to commit funds into the future for a specific process. Um, project. Um, we act as agent to the county or investment manager. We have no authority. We do what you folks tell us what to do. Do you remember, Dick or Gloria, when the cap was set for how much we were going to keep in there no matter what and then what we would spend beyond that? I, it was already established when I joined the board. It was quite a time ago. I, I think maybe in rule eight and things kind of went south. Been a long time. I think we said we'll put income into the principal mm -hmm. so we get two million dollars. And then they have taken and been able to manage that principal up to twenty four seven. That would be good to, because it was at one point nine. What's your so view of of course, as far as where we're going and where we've been year to date, we've been in a market decline. Um, it's been the worst bond market in 40 plus years, plus the stock market decline. So it's something that um, the portfolio is declining in line with the broad markets, plus more of it's growth oriented. And so what we have is, as far as the future is an expected average rate of return that I would see in the five and a half to six and a half percent range um, when you look out 10 years. So even though markets have sold off year to date, uh, we still have a long-term outlook for that, that return range. Not that we can guarantee it, but that's what we've experienced as well. Um, I don't remember the year, but I remember when we did that, it was below a million dollars, and we, we right. decided we had to do something. So we put a freeze on it. We didn't give out any money for quite a little while. Wow. We wanted it to get to not, up to a million and not go below. And then they put in a little bit for inflation. And I think why it is, I think the figure was supposed to be 1.2. Yeah, I thought it was 1.2. Yeah, and it says here, trustee limit 1.2. Yeah. But that doesn't mean that we can but the jump inflation, in there. And, right. Well, because the inflation's gone up more than that when yeah. we did it. Yeah, you're right there. Well, we've also tried to be really careful, too, and not be too close to that, I know. We want to keep it above, but not to keep it maybe not. Yeah. Well, you know, since 2008, we had the financial crisis market crash in 2008. Um, you know, we've had the strongest run in the equity markets in 10 years ever. It's been nothing but up since uh, we're leading right up until December, January of this year. Um, we've had the strongest S&P 500 returns of all time, and uh, right. we're not expecting that to continue. And uh, so, you know, it, it, it you've seen the results. You you put, you put a moratorium on. Distributing when it was below a million dollars, we got up to nearly two million dollars through those equity returns and, and had very strong performance across the board. Um, now we're in a correction cycle. Um, you know, we as they've observed, you know, we we've had a you know we're down by you know three hundred thousand um, dollars, but that includes distributions from the, from twelve to forty one. Um, you know, we are invested for the long haul. It's a you know sixty forty percent. Fixed sixty percent equity, forty percent fixed income asset allocation, and that that asset allocation has proven over the long term to support a, a fair amount of distributions, typically four percent distribution rate. Um, so again, we are long term investors. We are going through a market correction. If you remember, just two years ago, the market was down thirty percent. We're only at twenty percent down today uh, from the from the all time high. So yes, it, it is painful to watch, but uh, long term. You know, the overall trend of the market is to continue to go up. We are, we're seeing a, an unusual period of time, as David said, where we have a, a market sell off in the equity side, but also a rapidly rising interest rate environment that caused the bonds to fall as well, too. So it's kind of a double whammy right now in the financial market. So, um, yes, the, the market value is down, but, you know, as long term investors, we, we should see these uh, values recover over time. 
How much money is in the income cash right now? What's available to us? It's fifteen thousand five hundred. As far as I and if I yeah, remember right, correctly, the request was something closer to a hundred thousand dollars, or maybe even more. It's, it's, uh, the total request was ninety-five, but we took out the flooring, redoing the floors. Right. Um, the village has has agreed from their special projects that they're going to cover that. So it's just for the porch, and that's eighty thousand, eighty-five thousand dollars. Okay. So do you have a recommendation if we have a request for 80 and we have 15, is there? <laughs> Unfortunately, this, there's nothing we can do from the domain, which in the trust, as we're talking about, if you move from a million to 1.7 today, you don't have access to that $700,000. It's yeah. part of the principle of the corpus. You, the, the only provision in the trust document, the will, was the special pro, uh, provision for uh, special circumstances with the Copley Hospital where you can distribute corpus of the trust. And, I think that's Copley. Copley. Yeah, Copley. Thanks, Gloria. <laughs> I, I wanted to back up just a little bit and give you a little background on um, the Copley trustees. Um, it's always the select board, the five select board. And then we have Gloria Wing and um, Dick Sargent, who have been trustees of the fund for many, many years. Do you know how long you've been a trustee? 30 years, probably. Yeah. So, and they're kind of like the elders. I feel like they, they uh, tell us, well, you tell us not, not because of your age, but because you know so much about the fund and you're always able to explain the fund really well. Brian is another one that's been served for a long, long time. And it's a good reminder as well as education for the folks that haven't been on as long. Uh, but I joined in 2008 when things tightened right up. Mm -hmm. And then we were like, okay, we're not doing anything, so. You know, and, and I know I, I had suspicions that that was the way it is now. We have to wait until, you know, the income grows enough to, so we can do it. And so the answer is no to requests. Um, but the other question with, with that was, okay, so when there is enough money in there, do we come back to that person that requested last or, you know, how do we do it? You know, I know that that was a question you had um, when, you, when you came in. Yeah, and we have a smaller we, request that takes out that 15, right? Then we're back to zero, so we have to, you know, if that's essentially at a, at a, a six percent return, that's going to push us back four years, right? So, we, you know, we don't have a protocol for this, do we? For, for um, well, this is what he said. He says, I correct that the income shall be, not be anticipated or pledged beyond the amount actually in hand. Mm -hmm. But it may be accumulated for any purpose within the scope of the gift, and successive accumulations may be applied to the same object. So we could do. So I don't think we can commit to eighty thousand dollars. Right. So it says that successive accumulations can be. So they would have to come back again. Right. But does that mean that we could give part and then part again towards the same prop? Does that mean we could? Pay in installments? Is that what that means? Well, not without no. Ourselves. Right. We right. can't. We can't commit to it. Say there may be another more worthy project coming <clears throat> next year, mm -hmm. and that would be the one that would get the money. Right. And then the, I guess the other question too is how long would it take us to get from fifteen thousand to eighty-five thousand at a five or six percent growth? If they knew that, they'd be really rich. <laughs> <laughs> With your We're crystal ball. Assuming, assuming a five or six percent growth rate. That assumption is actually it's not the growth rate because right. you're just distributing the income. So oh right. That, that yeah. interest rate, that that income rate is you know let's call it two percent on that one point of growth. Oh gotcha. Yeah. So it's going to take a while. That's yeah. another distinction of return, total return versus your yield of your portfolio. Gotcha. Yeah. Um, total return includes capital appreciation, which is the growth of your principal growth of your corpus, which again can't be distributed. It's mm -hmm. only mm -hmm. interest and dividends that can be distributed. Okay. Mm -hmm. So it, that's that's why you got from a million to 1.9, 1.7. It, yeah, it grew well, and, and and because of that growth, we should have more income to uh, distribute. But we're in a bit of a tight market. That I mean, historically low interest rates. Up until this last few months, we had zero floor on interest rates. So you know, the people issuing bonds did not have to pay anything to issue bonds. So that's when we well over that. We know our checking accounts are not earning us any money or savings accounts. Right. The same reality is there for bond bonds as well. 
the other thing that I've noticed, you know, in that little more than a year, we've we've given away one hundred forty four thousand dollars. That's a lot over a short period of time. So that's why we at, we're at where we're at with the fund. Can we can we distribute fifteen thousand dollars to the the country club? I mean, the money can't be commingled. Right, yeah. with another project. Yeah. It, she can't, can't. She can't save it for the project. Yeah, we can't do the. We can't, we can't do the job in parts like that because we have to support the whole route right. to do the porch. It's like all or nothing. We have to. It can't be segmented. I didn't again. know if you could like save the money, like if the money was given to you, save it until the rest of it was available. I. I, I don't know whether however everybody else feels, but I think that feels like commingling and keep it with the trust until yeah. Because Difficult. isn't that fifteen thousand dollars also generating income in the cash account? It currently is in cash. Um, it's not invested currently because we weren't sure how it was. We we generally don't want to invest any money that can be paid out within a year. Because mm -hmm. and particularly we moved us this time because at fifteen thousand would have been ten thousand today mm -hmm. that interest. And you know, in, in this construction environment, that 15,000 might buy all the screws <laughs> or nails. So, but you, you do have it in cash with interest rates rising. You should be able to realize some income off of that 15,000. In money market rates, the, the rate's still below 0.5. Okay. <laughs> 0.5%. So, it's, it's not going to show up. We're doing the best that we can in the industry. Any more questions? David, do you have a question? I, this is not germane to the, to, the, to the country club, but I want to ask a question about the property fund and why they're so heavily invested in Vanguard, who's heavily invested in fossil fuels. And why are we not divesting? And if this is a market correction, maybe it's a good time to re research other options besides fossil fuels that they're putting in one oil county in the paper. Being the safest place to harbor from climate change. So there's never I mean, been. I know this. Uh, <coughs> question for you to correct something that I think is wrong. We shouldn't be investing in fossil fuels. There was no mandate in the will and trust for us to invest from an ESG environmental social. I'm not saying there it's was. It's, right. a, it's a question of and where are where are the ethics of the people in Memorial County if we're going to keep investing in things that are destroying the environment of the planet. So uh, you guys can figure that out. We can take that right. home and sleep on it if we want to. But I'm very uncomfortable with with giving anything to the fossil fuel companies. They just had the, the last quarter, they had the highest profits they've ever seen. And, you, and you're not making money. You're saying you're not making enough money right now because the market's correcting. But you're investing in, in something that's making more profits at any time in our history. It doesn't make a lot of sense if you're going to diversify or divest. Now's a good time to do it. Yeah. That's fine. Yeah, thank you, David. Thank you. It's a good point. So just to be clear, if we did take the fifty thousand out of cash income and then yes, we have to the fundraise the remaining sixty five, that would be cold mingling. Yes, it would be. You would have to identify some aspect of the project that was That's why I said the screws. Or it could be the engineering. The engineering of it's probably right. or the labor. Or well, I was thinking well, the, the same. Labor can be a lot more yeah. than that. But. I was thinking the same thing. Could we do that? Okay. The engineering. So yeah, the engineering, or it's possible. Or the decking. Then that wouldn't be coming with any other part of the project. But. We could buy the trucks for them. But right. But it's something. I don't know if we need these trucks right. here yeah. to right. make a decision on that. <clears throat> it's not. Okay. Okay. But that was one of the one of the big reasons we asked you to come, so we could try to figure out, you know, exactly what we can and can't do. I know we've got the, you know, the 
what Alexander Copley wanted us to do, but we want to know what we can do within that, you mm -hmm. know, what we're allowed to do. So, um, in the book, I, I did highlight for sections of the book. Yeah. I know you already have something about it. Yes. So, so it, it, um, you've got to live by the document, unfortunately. Yeah. Um, that's the whole point of the process. Is there any other questions for these folks? Yeah. Laura? Do you find the um, these documents online since there's not enough copies? Do um, you know where to read this? We, we, can, we can make them, they, they should be available at the town office. So we can send okay, we can send a PDF to them and they can print so out. It doesn't copies. live online or live anywhere? Well, there, there, are, there are online access for the, the people that have access to it, and it's part of our primary. But it's a public document. Not the document is public and it'll be yeah. public at, okay. you know, we, we can't give the public access to the client accounts. It's, it's oh, no, I understand. Okay. 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 Yeah, and it should be readily available. Okay. So, um, just reading farther down, thanks for pointing out the, um, the piece of the document that you included, um, the Copley deed, um, in the second to last tab. Um, so just to, to clarify, um, I'm understanding that we can't commingle, but it also says um, each work establishes this is the second to last tab on the second page of the copy deed that we have. Um, that each work established under this gift shall be separate and distinct and shall always bear in conspicuous place a suitable inscri inscription identifying it as erected or established from said Alexander Hamil um, Hamilton Copley Fund. So does that does that mean that we wouldn't be able to just, you know, purchase the tracks or, you know, some, some distinct and separate part of the, of the project at the country club? In the past, I know we've done it, like, I'm pretty sure the library has got a room. That's right. Yeah. Yeah. They do. So you can do like a room. Mm -hmm. or a, yeah. Yeah. Maybe. Right. You just can't. There's a room, is a room at the hospital that's got, or the one of the wings has got that too. Yeah. So you can't do like a wall in a room. Okay. okay. So that's the question. Right. Okay. I think we need to let it grow. And it will. Yeah. And it will. Thank you for coming up. Thanks. Is there any other questions for these gentlemen? Before we leave here, I want to ask how many of you have been over to see our new kitchen at the senior center. I haven't been there yet. I want to see it. Are you inviting us? Are you cooking us something, Gloria? Huh? Are you cooking something for us, Gloria? Oh, you wouldn't get it. That would never work. But we have the open house Saturday. Are you done? We need to know. Oh, yeah. I, I saw it. I was out of town. Yeah. I'd love to come over and see it. Yes. It must be really professional kitchen now. Oh, it is. That's great. When, when's, when's a good time to for people to pop in? Are you, what are your... It's open now because it's a kitchen. Yeah. But uh, I go in once a week. Okay. Well, thank you. Thank you very much. Thanks uh, for coming. Any follow up questions? You can get them through Eric. I'm sure. Happy to respond to anyone. We appreciate you coming tonight. You're very welcome. Thank you. You're very welcome. Thank you. Nice to meet everybody. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. So next on that same agenda, is there, okay, we've answered number three, right? Second. I have a motion by Dick and a second by Don. Any further discussion on it? All in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? We have adjourned to copy trust meeting. Now I'll call the select board meeting to order. Thank you. Thank you for Thank you. coming. Sorry. At 6.30. Thanks, Dick. Thanks, Gloria. Thank you. I'll come see that kitchen. I will. <laughs> uh, they're cooking.
American church. <clears throat> All right. First on the agenda of the select board, is there any additions or changes, Derek? Okay. Next is approve the minutes. The minutes of May 2nd, 2022. I have a motion by Brian and a second by Judy. Is there any further discussion on these minutes? I wanted to add um, on page five, page five, uh, number five, Eric, not Eric, Todd had said, um, uh, made a statement that I, I remember, um, and I probably don't remember verbatim, but he talked about trying to obtain some information about flood zones or who wasn't, um, uh, who was not doesn't have flood insurance and he's been waiting for a year for the feds to release that information to him. Oh, that yeah, you asked that question, Don, I remember. Yeah. And then that was Todd's answer, I think. He's been waiting a year for information just to have it that that have it in, in the minutes. Have it documented, yeah. yeah. Right. That's a good one. Because it did in that plan, it's said multiple times that we as a town would encourage those individuals to get flood insurance. Yeah. Right. right. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Okay. A any further discussion? All in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Those minutes are passed unanimously. Now the minutes of May 9th, 2022. I'll make a motion we accept those minutes. I have a motion by Don and a second by Brian. Is there any further discussion on those? All in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? I'm abstaining. I wasn't here. Okay. Minutes are passed. 4 1. Um, next, community concerns. Do we have community concerns tonight? Laura? Hi. I'm actually here um, for four different houses on my road, which is Campbell Road. Um, and I would like to bring up a concern about the plowing and the fact that we were uh, development built 94, 95. Our original road was built by the developer. Um, now I understand the plows plow 24 inches. Uh, consequently, the effect you've seen on our road is that we no longer have sh uh, shoulders. It's so wide. Uh, the it now because you reduce the shoulders, it drops off now. I watched a car this winter who was driving in his lane, barely went off, caught caught the edge of the road and went right into the ditch because uh, there's no shoulders. On my side of the road, all the way up again, there's four houses. The plowing now has put so much sediment and rock that it's now impeding onto my property. It's ruined, there is no ditch, I have pictures. Um, it has redirected all of the water into our four properties. Um, I now have a creek running around my apart, on my house. I have an entire section that is now swampland. Consequently, I'm losing trees. Um, I have three maples, one of, the maples is of my neighbor's 200 year old maple that the, because the plowing has stretched out so far, it's very much in danger. I have two on my property. Um, it's, it's an unfortunate consequence of widening the work, the roads. I think the, I would ask you guys to look at it. Um, also I question how much research was done to, uh, before this, was just decided we're gonna get a bigger plow because it's gonna save the town money. But in reality, you've now added four foot of road to miles and miles, which now have to be maintained otherwise. So I think if you weighed it out, the cost would be negative. Uh, more importantly, I can't, you cannot, <laughs> you're, you're impeding our property values by turning them into swamps. Uh, or and or encroaching on our property now. I've spoken uh, and why I'm here for community concerns. I've been talking to the highway department for two years. My neighbor's been calling. They come through and at one point they were 
doing these ditches, which was directing more water in. Then they came through with the mowers and started mowing and they're mowing our trees, which then the debris falls into the ditch, further increasing the layers. I would love for you guys to come see what I'm talking about. What, what road are you on again? Camp Bell. Yeah. Oh, Camp Bell Road. The highest taxed uh, hill in Lamoille County, I should add, having just paid my taxes. <laughs> but I think it would, our road would demonstrate what's going on that's potentially going on i know that um and i think there's other damage that people don't realize quite what's going on <clears throat> uh, being on the drb we just approved a fence on a road um and her comment was um why she wanted to put up a fence was because the she's having a tremendous amount of dust she's had trees die so she wants to put up a fence to stop it um and also what I've seen on my road and she was saying she's seen on her road is increased speed because it's so wide now people can just fly up and down and having lived here for 20 years this that didn't happen. Um, and it's not because there's more people living there they've been there it's because the road is so wide now things zoom up and down i've called to try to get the speed reduced I can't get any anybody to do anything and. I would love for you to come see because there's a river at my house right now because this rain. <laughs> so I invite you over. Thank you. Thank you. We'll, we'll uh, see what we can do about taking a look at it. I'd like to drive up there. I've been yeah, up there you, in a while. It'd be very informational for you, I think. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Is there any other community concerns? Julie? Hello, everyone. Uh, my name is Julie Nephew. I'm the daughter of Norman Nephew and uh, Judy Nephew. The uh, Judy Nephew, Norm Nephew had the uh, 20 years, frankly. We are trying to put housing into our vacant building. Everyone in this town says they want to see our building productive. The town plan says we have to sell it to somebody because the town won't give us a permit. This board four weeks ago said they think the nephews shouldn't control the municipal parking lot. We're not trying to control the municipal parking lot. Every other building on the municipal parking lot has parking. We have none because we don't have any, any residents. We're looking for the same thing that everybody else has, right? Now, two weeks ago, my sister was in here and came up with some brilliant ideas to add at least 14 spots. And since then, we have gotten a lot of additional comments from folks saying that we think we can add probably another 30. My brother had already suggested a way to add 20 spots just by having folks park on one side, plow that side, have people move, plow the other side. All of a sudden, you're not limited to 35 overnight spots. We're not trying to control the municipal spot. We're trying to develop a building in Morrisville. The bylaws were changed in 2018 to allow us to have as many units as we could have. Now, this body and the Development Review Board says, no, you still can have only nine. That's not right. That's not the purpose of this body or that body to say how many people can live in this town. It's a permitted use to have as many apartments as we can fit. It's a permitted use. What's the problem? Parking. We solved that. We gave you 40 parking spots. And I know tonight on this um, agenda is coming up with a uh, a committee to say, how should those, how should we solve the parking? If we can come up with 40 spots, you can come up with 40 and probably a lot more. 
I am here tonight to formally request a reasonable accommodation under the Fair Housing, the Federal Fair Housing Act, 42 U.S.C. 1308, because this parking waiver is preventing us from providing housing for people who have disabilities, people with psychiatric disabilities, people with physical disabilities, people who are serving people with disabilities, nurses. Copley Hospital cannot hire enough nurses because they don't have enough housing. This is ridiculous. This is not the time to limit housing. Jim Levinsky at the Lamoille Housing Partnership came forward and said at the D DRB meeting two weeks, three weeks ago, he said, we get 500 applications for housing every month. That's a lot of housing. We're only offering 19 units. I know we cannot solve the housing crisis, but we don't need to limit it to nine. Now, I have gotten here in the News and Citizen on, no, on Thursday, May 5th, Emily Rosenbaum, who is with the United Way, wrote an article, a guest perspective, and she said, people who rent their homes in Lamoille County are three times less likely to have a vehicle than people who own them. In Morrisville, a renter is 11 times more likely to be without a car than a homeowner. With current commuter bus routes, a person who can live in Morrisville without a car and work in Stowe or head toward Harvey. Renting makes a person much less likely to own an automobile, especially in those towns where people are most likely to commute elsewhere in the county for work. We don't need one parking spot for every apartment we put in. And we should not be limiting housing for people with disabilities simply because there's a one-for-one -one parking requirement. The Fair Housing Act requires reasonable, uh, reasonable accommodations to zoning and bylaw requirements. It also requires <coughs> towns like Morrisville to affirmatively further fair housing. I know this because I'm in a fair housing attorney and I work on this kind of issue every day all over the country. This is what Morrisville needs to do I formally request a reasonable accommodation of the one-for-one -one parking requirement so that parking is not the reason to avoid permitting housing for people with disabilities. Thank you. Thanks, Thank Julie. I don't, I don't understand myself how your building wouldn't be any different than um, the Lamoille Housing Partnerships building, you know, you don't have any more or less parking ability there. You know, as you think about it, it's like there's two spots in front, just like there's two spots in front of yours. You know, I don't, I don't understand that. I know I didn't, I didn't vote for you to not have. No, I know that. But at the time that Lamoille Housing Partnership obtained its permit, zoning permit, there was a 0.75 parking spots per unit right. under the bylaws. The bylaws have changed. It increased the ability to put as many housing units as you want. Our building used to be limited to nine because of how small it is. Right. The square footage. You're the talking square about. footage yeah. of the lot, right. not the building. Right. Because the building is 10,000 square feet. It can hold 19 units. Right. It can hold probably a lot more than 19 units. But lot size you're talking the about. The lot size is half an acre. And so Morrisville's Zoning bylaws said if you have half an acre, you can have eight apartments. Right. We got a zoning uh, conditional use permit in 2016 that said we can have nine apartments. Mm -hmm. Wow, right? And we got a parking waiver for all nine units. Mm -hmm. And now Morrisville refuses to renew it and says we can't have 19 units. And if it's because of parking, I mean, I know there's other reasons that could be at play. I will be making my same pitch to the DRB when it comes up. But I am telling you, parking 
is not a good enough reason because I have proof right. that not everyone needs a parking lien. And if, if it limits right. housing for people with disabilities, there is a Fair Housing Act violation. My job is to sue counties and cities. Mm -hmm. For this kind of thing, I'm not saying I'm going to sue. I have I, can I, not can I, sued this town for many, many years for a lot of things. May I ask a question? So yes. it's, this is not necessarily a done deal, correct? And well, a and b, um, this the, this select board only wrote a recommendation, and we don't have the authority to approve or disapprove. This select board wrote a letter. I, I was actually asking the rest of the board. I'm so, respectfully. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I didn't understand. I just want to. I, I just want to update. I just want to all get on the same page about. Mm -hmm. what we decided and where we're at in the process because i i you know i, I know we're all proponents of um high density um development of housing in the downtown area more, we, housing, we, more housing we want more housing in the downtown area we want to support you and i i think the big issue for us in our discussion um around parking is you know if we set a precedent what will happen um in our downtown if we don't have a plan for parking my and also my impression is that as the select board we don't have the authority to approve your project we we were just asked to write a recommendation but we we did when all this came about with hutchins street jim levinsky came in here and he pitched us that look there's tons of people that don't need the car they don't they they have, want housing they don't want a car and at the time, all of us are kind of scratching our head going, really, you don't need a car? You know, I mean, it, it's hard to fathom that people don't have a car that want to rent here, but it's true, you know, and I, since I've learned a lot more about it, and I know that it's true. So we're not in disagreement with you at all, you know, I mean, just because, you know, you may not want a car, just because you have a place to rent doesn't mean you're going to have a car. I know that our position is we have to be very careful with that parking lot because there's a lot of constraints that we're still learning about. That, the, that Alexander Copley put forward, you know, that, that we, we can get ourselves into trouble if we promise spots to anybody. We go back and look at the um, the way that says we we're here, her, you were here earlier with a deed, and that was his project. And we can't promise people, you know, or we'll get in, in court for another reason. You know what I mean? Yes, but let me clarify, okay? okay. So because both of you making really good points. And I understand them. But here's what I am trying to say. Two weeks, three, four weeks ago, this body wrote a letter that said, the nephews should not be able to control the municipal parking lot. We're not trying to control the municipal parking lot. That's, that one that That's not what that said. That is what it no, said. It's not. It's it's not. Not. We have it. We have it. <laughs> Concerns about the nephews controlling the municipal parking lot. Uh, and I know you think that, that it's going right. to say that, but that's what I meant. That. No. And here's the other thing. We can look that up. If we found other parking off site, mm -hmm. if, we <coughs> prevented, if we provide zip car service for our tenants, mm -hmm. If we, I mean, there's a million different ways. Oh. We don't need one parking spot per unit, but this board controls what the bylaws say. This board is going to be talking tonight about whether or not to have a parking commission. We presented ideas to come up with 25 to 40 additional spots. Yeah, we love that your sister coming in. We I'm saying that. we'll not allow, I mean, and every other building in that parking area already has nine units. Mm -hmm. Why? Why would this body say we don't want the nephews to develop that much housing? Because that's what that letter says. I didn't say that. It's I know that. Can somebody, it can says just something to that effect, all right? Thank you. Thank you, Laura. So much. And it okay. is not a favorable letter in any way, shape, or form. And it should say, you know what? We have an obligation to further fair housing. This family has been trying to put housing into a vacant building, and it will be filled up with people who have disabilities, people who cannot afford, people who are going to be able to work at Copley Hospital. This is a very good idea. Mm -hmm. And there is no reason 
that a one-for-one -one parking requirement should limit it. And so I will say again, you do not necessarily have an obligation to grant a zoning permit, but you do have an obligation to consider my Fair Housing Act reasonable accommodation request, because that is what select boards do. You, re you consider changes. And I sat here last week and heard how you changed the zone two weeks ago, you changed the sound ordinance so that people could hear music after 10 p.m. Don't tell me this board doesn't have the ability to make changes to the zoning bylaws. It certainly does. And this is a lot better reason to do it than because people want to hear music. Because you have a lot of liability at stake and I am not trying to threaten you. I am telling you, I think this is a great housing project. It has been for 20 years. I do not understand for the life of me why this town has pro prohibited this housing project from going forward. It makes no sense at all. And I will continue to fight this battle. I, I just, I'm, I'm concerned that um, you feel that we're against you. Yeah. No, and, uh, no, I, no, I'm please, saying well, I, the zoning bylaws letter, letter say please. one for one. The zoning bylaws say one for one. The this board say, huh? has the ability no, to the provide a reasonable accommodation. The planning commission is the one who sets the zoning. We approve or disapprove what the planning commission comes up with. Right. Those are the steps. That are I understand that. And this board can grant changes to the ordinances, just like it did two weeks ago for a sound ordinance. An ordinance is different than a zoning. Mm -hmm. I think this board has the authority. You guys can yeah. check with your lawyers. Go I don't care. I'm not asking you to make a decision tonight. Right. I'm telling you, you need to consider it. Well, just this just paragraph so. right here, second, Brian. The select board supports the development of the nephew building and welcome its rebirth to its former reflection of the historic and architectural nature of our downtown. We support the development of the downtown to support individuals with families who wish to live downtown and benefit from the ability to access merchants and amenities without the need of getting into a motorized vehicle. We believe there's a balance to be struck. That's Does that sound like we're against you I in think, any way at all? I think the problem here is that like we are for you, but we are seeing that if we if we recommended that we waive a parking the the parking requirement, um, that we haven't solved the parking issue, and we're looking to solve the parking issue. I agree. But we but I just think it's a longer. I know you've been in it for a long time. I know it's been a long term, um, you know, process for you. I'm going to say process. I I think you use the word battle. We are for you. We are for the development of your building. Yeah. I think I speak for everyone when I say All of that. Us are. It's going to be a process because we haven't figured out the parking situation in the downtown. And that we've admit, admitted that. That's why we're, you know, going to start the um, you know, the parking committee. But and I just ask that maybe you you try to believe that we're for you and, and I, I I am asking for some patience, I guess. Thank you, you know? Jess, for yeah. saying that. And I just want to throw in that. Yeah, two weeks ago, you're right, your sister was here, and I think we all agreed as a board that she gave some very, very creative ideas on how to increase parking in town. I don't think any of us disagreed with that at all. You've, you've used the word changes. There's lots of changes going on in the village right now. And what I said two weeks ago was, and others did as well, that we need a parking site because there have been so many changes. There's a finite amount of parking in this village right now. There's no doubt about that. How much of it is available right now? I'm not sure anybody has a true handle on that. I can go around and count spaces as Todd did three years ago, I believe it was, uh, two year, or four years ago. But clearly things have changed since then. It's really hard for this body, it's hard for me anyways, to uh, make changes in regards to parking without really knowing what the overall picture is and there's going to be more there's going to be more housing um, projects coming in the future which are going to put additional burdens on parking we have i have a number of businesses 
I've only been on this board three months and I've had a number of businesses come to me already and they're concerned about parking. I wouldn't say parking is saturated for businesses right now, but it will be the way, the way things are, are going. And so I think it, it, it's, it's bigger than your, your suggest, you know, we, we have to look at the, or at least I do have to look at the whole picture and without, without a parking study, as simple as it might be, uh, it, it's really hard to get a handle on how many, on what the number of spaces are there and what your project, what impact your project would have, the 19 units would have. You, you, you've told us that you're, you've already been granted eight or nine parking spots for, or eight or nine units, sorry. Um, but I think the DRB included eight or, or waived that for eight or nine parking well, spots because that, that was that, at that DRB. That has expired. Right. So they have it has not expired. To... It expired, expired and they have not agreed to. We were told that by Todd Thomas that he will not renew the permit. Right. So and he has been a, he has been very difficult to work with for our family to work with. He he sends us the wrong information for let's how see. to fill out permits. My name is David Nephew. Uh, yeah, I okay, don't so, want to go into this. You asked me. Okay, that's fine. You don't want to go into it. Yeah. I have a, I have an opportunity right now to to bring public concern to this board. So please don't stifle me. I'm not going to stay. Well, I, I think we can hear from the, someone from the DRB who can tell me about that too. You, have, you also have to be recognized by me before right, you can I'm speak. Sorry, she, you know. uh, Don, Don asked me to speak. Yeah. Um, I was looking at Laura back there, actually. Oh, I'm, I'm sorry. sorry. I, 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 yeah, Laura is a member of the DRB. I, I want to stop this before we go any further yeah. and put Laura in a bad first situation. Right. Yeah, I, I need to ask one thing. Laura, are you still in deliberative session on this permit request? Uh, is the DRB still I'm on the list? Pulling up the notes from Todd. It was continued. I'm, I'm still. I'm asking if right. you're under. If you were in deliberative session, we cannot ask you to speak here. You can't comment you, without um, putting you in a very compromising situation. Understood. Okay. The, I, um, this, the conversation we're standing here too. We're under community concern. This is not an agenda item. Right. This has gone far beyond what the community concern is really about. Right. I think Julie stated her case very clearly to begin with. It is morphed now into this. Again, conversation is taking us down a really bad road. Right. Yeah. And I don't want As it always does. Okay. So, so all I would saying. say is the notes from that meeting are public, and I would encourage everyone to read those. Thank you. That will yeah. maybe okay. And Bri Brian's been waiting a long time to, to say a comment. I'm sorry, okay. Brian. But the one thing is, I want to make sure, you know, because when I sat here, I would like to see you guys do something you've done. I used to go down there and buy furniture from you and your father. I did too. And the, and the thing of it is, the one thing about that parking lot, no matter how many parking lots we have up there, it's public parking, first come, first serve. Because even that big building that's being built down there, they don't, we don't give them any parking places that are marked for them. So I would like to see you guys come to that, you know, when we have this meeting on getting somebody in here to do a study because I was really impressed with the way you guys come up with quite a few parking spaces. We believe that we can put 14 units along the side of our building. 14 parking spaces. 14, 14. parking spots. Yeah. But we need the town's approval to do that. Yeah. So let's, let's put this, let's put, we have a discussed forming a downtown parking. Yeah, that's right here. Up. So let's put that there. And number that's, seven. That's where this seven. information is going to go and the research is going to go. But we've heard your concern. I appreciate that. And I only got up to answer a couple of questions. So I didn't okay. mean to belabor it or right. bring us down I these dab bad roads. We do want to work with you. Thank yes. you. Yes. I appreciate Thank you. that. Thank you. Thanks, Julie. Thank you. We'll Thank be you. around for the parking discussion. Okay. Okay, great. Is there any other community concerns tonight? We're going to liquor control. Sarah, you have something, right? I make a motion on liquor control. Second. I have a motion by Judy and a second by Don. All in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? We are now in the liquor control board. So there's a request to cater uh, an event um, from Black Diamond Barbecue. Uh, it's a private um, function <coughs> on Ongar Road on Saturday, August. Is this typical? But someone, like, I've had a party in my house and had someone bartend, but I didn't ask Did you to get a permit? Shame on you. Oh, my. I didn't know I had to do that. I didn't hear that. <laughs> well, Trudy doesn't have to do it. <laughs> so the permit takes the bed. Right. Provided the alcohol that holds the 
vendor does. Oh, liquor license. Oh, okay. Exactly. We made sure we had someone registered, certified, whatever that's called. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Thank you. 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 Thank
and uh, so it's, it's a pretty special program. So thanks to everyone for Great, welcome. I, for one, have known Anna for quite a few years. She was a good friend of my daughter's. So. Congratulations. I didn't see that. Oh, that one there, yeah. Go ahead. It was exciting today. I had somebody ask if we had a rec coordinator. Yes! I moved to offer the position of full time seasonal recreation coordinator to Anna McCormick at the rate of $21.14 per hour. I have second. a motion by Judy and a second by Don. Is there any further discussion on it? All in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion is passed unanimously. Yay. Yay. <laughs> Yay. Welcome. That's awesome. Next, appoint two police officers. Got them right here. Jason, you want to talk about them? Sure. So Adam Worth's coming to us with uh, two years of full-time experience. That's Martin's son, right? Correct. And then the second one is Patrick Sad, and he currently works for the Franklin County Sheriff's Office. He's only level two certified right now, but he'll be going to the level two okay. training either this fall or next spring. Great. All right. Do you want to have a motion? Do we need separate motions for this? Yes. Uh, we I'll move. We offer the position of full-time police officer to Adam Worth at a rate of $23.96 per hour with a sign-on bonus of $7,500, $3,750 to be paid with his first paycheck and the balance of $3,750 to be paid at the successful completion of his first year of employment. I had a motion by Don and a second by Brian. Is there any further discussion on this? All in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion is passed unanimously. Second motion. Yep, next one. I move to offer the position of full-time police officer to Patrick Sad at a rate of $23.96 per hour. Okay, I have a motion by Don. Do I have a second? Second by Brian. Any further discussion? All in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion is passed unanimously. All right. <clears throat> Next, approve the town plan. Todd, are you up there? I'm over here. Oh, I saw you up there. And that's not you. What's going on? Just the town plan. We've uh, long winding roads. We have the ability to vote on the now this is not a hearing for the town plan. It's just this is not a hearing. Hearings are closed. Okay. This is this is a, where the rubber meets the road. This is like the vote on the plan. Okay. And the trustees are uh, voting Wednesday night. Okay. All right. Do I have a motion? Do I hear a motion? If I say I make a motion to accept the town plan as is, is that sufficient? That's sufficient, Judy. Second. I have a motion by Judy and a second by Brian. Is there further discussion? I guess what I would add is I, I'm planning on voting for this town plan. I've read it very thoroughly. I've had numerous conversations with Todd about it. Certainly listened to many conversations here with the board and and part of those conversations. And it's been said multiple times that we will have opportunities in the next eight to 10 years, eight years, seven. To, yeah. seven, to amend this plan. And so I will probably be suggesting amendments to this plan in the course of the next seven or eight years. And just want to make that part of the record that, um, it's not necessarily cast in stone for until 2030. Good point. Todd can't wait. <laughs> we'll see. <laughs> All right, do I hear a motion? I make, well, oh, we I had a motion. Anything. Okay, any further discussion on it? 
All in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? The motion is passed unanimously. Next, discuss forwarding the town plan for a regional review to the LCPC. Isn't that the plan? That's what happens next, right? That is the next step in the process uh, in order to keep things documented and uh, in the record. Uh, we'll see what we're going to forward the town plan to uh, the Long Island Planning Commission for regional review. Take a motion to do it. I have a motion by Brian second. and a second by Don. Any further discussion on this? All in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion is passed unanimously. Next, discuss forming a downtown parking committee. Who wants to talk about it? So I can suggest that perhaps there be some parameters put around it. Uh, and that we don't want this to drag on for a long period of time. So I would suggest putting a time limit on this. I would also encourage you to have your time uh, come to a close as we're starting the budget season, October November time frame. If that's time enough, not to rush it, but I, I think this is really a limit for a uh, quick look here. Uh, some actions to be taken with great action statements to come back to the committee. And if those action statements are with merit and we're finding them to be something they want to drive, it, then uh, let's have them come at us during budget season rather than this time of year when we really can't impact anything. So my suggestion would be a period of uh, perhaps six months, uh, we're looking at November, five months of October. So um, just put a, I would suggest put a time frame on it. I would see, you know, my committee is only going to keep them out with a very long, we have an odd number, five or seven. That way the workflow is going to be spread. There is probably going to be some phone calling to be done and some investigating to be done. Uh, some time walking around doing things. Uh, so um, I would encourage you to set the parameters for the numbers and uh, for the for time when they would come back in front of the board and Do you have a recommendation of, let's say there's five people of who might be on, or membership of that board would be, would be uh, representatives of certain boards already, like one of us in particular, one from the Planning Council, that sort of thing? Um, I, I, I really don't have a recommendation on that. I would say if there's a member of the select board, that would be ideal. Uh, Todd, at the last meeting, had raised his hand. I don't want to volunteer him in that position, but he's spoken on Anderson and he's done the study, in, in, uh, non-scientific study before, but took an interest at that point in time. So, um, you know, the board member and Todd and three or five, but depending on the size yeah. of the committee you're looking for. I don't see a problem having seven, you know, it seems some, there might be that much interest. Um, it'd be nice to have one of the nephew family join, Julie. And, and what um, I like to see is it be odd. Yeah, and it's maybe some, may, maybe somebody from the planning board or something like that, you know. Or Emily Rosenbaum or Jim Levinsky. Well, I know that I'm sitting on a committee with them. And um, one of the things we talked about today at the meeting is the uh, working committee Communities challenge when we're talking about housing, which then incorporates also parking uh, or transportation, basically. And um, so uh, they they might be someone it'd be good to have on the on the committee, but I know that they're pretty probably pretty thinly stretched. I would definitely like to see Todd on it if he would too, because yeah. he's already we've already done it. Like, he's we got it. We paid for it. I would like to see us look at that and then change it or add to it if we need to. Yeah. Rather than start. Right. I wondered about somebody from agency of transportation, you know, or someone that's worked in, you know, city <laughs> environments. Uh, pardon me. A state employee on our committee? No. <laughs> Get Ernie. <laughs> I appreciate your creative thinking, Bob. Really good. No, but really. You know what you mean, but no. He's probably good. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I know he would, but. Go ahead, Laura. Um, I would like to recommend that you have um, business owners, uh, <coughs> a business owner that has day hours, and then one that has night hours. Um, That's so a good that's idea. Very that's a good idea. Actually, and I was chatting with uh, Paul from Tacos and Taps about it too. 
<clears throat> Who's that? Caleb McGee. Oh, yeah. yeah. Well, yeah, he serves on the LCPC board right. as well. That's a good idea. Well, we can, I don't know how we're going to advertise it or put an ad out. Monday is the deadline for capturing the spot in the suites, but we'll talk to the person in the morning to see if we can clear the room, clear the ads. Maybe contact those people directly as well. Let's see if they're interested. Maybe mm -hmm. Kathy wants to get involved with that. I know she. Yeah. So right now we have. Makes sense. We're suggesting. <laughs> so right now we're suggesting a select board member, a planning commission member. I wrote down DRB member. DRB. Zoning. Or Todd. Todd. Thomas. One business day, one business night. That's six people right there. Yeah. And, uh, and then I'll see. Six, one more. Rental. Large rental owner. LCHP or LCPC? No, I know. You don't, but you have a lot of experience with the cast. So come on. Yeah. LCPC would probably be good. Yeah. And anybody's welcome Right. Go ahead, Lori. Can I just say, you probably don't need a DRB um, just to open on the spot for a resident or someone else, partially because Todd, uh, he knows all right. the zoning and all the. So it was just kind of duplication of effort. Yeah, you're right. So maybe do LCPC instead of DRB? Right, like what Julie said, Caleb. Caleb is not a bad. He's both a daytime business owner. Do you think Caleb would be interested in this? He will be. I'll call him tomorrow. I'll bet Caleb will start attending our meetings. Yeah. <laughs> I, well, let's volu volunteer him. I got to call him anyway. I'll call him tomorrow. Yeah. Put his put his hat in there. <clears throat> All right. Does that sound sound good to everyone? Do we need to word? Do we need to <clears throat> put specific wording or set um, meeting times or dates for this? I think the committee would do it. I think the committee would. Okay. Yeah. Go ahead, David. We can send a motion to the planning committee uh, with the, just the general the parameters of the numbers and a report back date, and then I will put the ad out. And then they can figure out their meeting times and everything and Absolutely. their flexibility. Yep. So not designate membership tonight. I, I, would, I would not. No. Okay, that's fine. We'll okay. see what we get for response. Potential. Should this committee feel it needs to spend some money, would it would there be any kind of a budget available to it? Then come back to us with a request. I know we've done a parking study already, but. The, par the parking study, I think Tom's referenced, was done uh, a decade ago and it cost 30000 Is that the figure I remember? It was the Omen parking study in 2008, so a decade and a half ago. Mm -hmm. I don't remember the amount. Um, I did go back and look it was 30000 I think. I to the board to do. We'll get there. We'll talk Right, right. Is that something? Yeah. Is that something that could be funded through um, through funds from the um, the COVID? I, I'm sorry, I forget what it's called. The COVID money. Yeah. Uh, no. 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 That might be a stretch, but I like yeah. it. Well, it's infrastructure related. Mm -hmm. it's adjacent, I guess. I don't know what it is you're working spending money on. Right. Mm -hmm. And how you spend it. I think it's it's. Typically covered through community development block grant funds. Mm -hmm. Okay. Now, would there be a chance of having eight members? One alternative? No, no, don't complicate it. Just. Okay. You know, what if, say, eight people step forward and want to do it? So you could have one of them be the eighth one. They couldn't, they could come listen and maybe talk, but couldn't vote. No, I'm unless it was only seven. An alternate, yeah, possible. Um, but that's just an idea. I recommend that any meetings be public. Yeah. Yeah. They're all public. Well, I, I, I would recommend I would recommend that we can um, put them on Zoom. Right. No. Why not? I think you want them on Zoom. Yeah. I think we. I always think we. I think we're overcomplicating this. Yes. Yes. Honestly, folks, I'm I'm just going to encourage okay. not overcomplicate this just right okay. now. Let's, let's put the ad out to the initial response. Yeah. Yeah. We'll build this. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, that's my encouragement. Mm -hmm. okay. 
David, you had a comment. Yeah, I had a question. Can you read the list of names that was suggested? Do you have a name? Yeah, one select board member, one planning commission member, Todd, Caleb, that would represent a, a day business and LCPC, one night business. And that would be one, two, that's six. Six. And then maybe Julie was Ju maybe uh, Julie yes. the public member of the public. Didn't you ask about um, somebody who was a housing development person? We, we mentioned Jim Levinsky. Jim Levinsky here. Yeah. Yeah. You wanted somebody in the housing. Service. Yeah. Well, that's why I suggested Julie because I know she's. Got... Are you around Julie enough to do that? I'm in. I have a concern about people getting on who have an agenda. Excuse me? I have a concern about people getting on who have an agenda. And I just want to make sure that we're here. People are going to be looking at this with open, an open mind about the parking, that it isn't something to benefit them personally. That's my concern. Right. Well, that'd be the I case with every business. It's going to benefit me personally now. I don't know why it would be a concern in the future. Well, it also will be benefiting the business owners and everything. Yeah. With that in mind, that um, in less than a few minutes, I found 21 parking spaces just by moving the plowing from one side to the other. It doesn't benefit just me because we don't need 21 parking spaces for our building. It benefited the whole town. And that was 25 above the 35, that 21 above the 35 that you already had. So to exclude somebody because they own a building, or have a, a concern, you may as well exclude Caleb. Caleb, Caleb. too. Yeah. Or anybody else that has, that you just named, because these business. are all people who have a concern, have a vested interest in this parking situation. And we're not trying to unsolve it. So please don't exclude us just because, I, I, it, just because I don't have that. Us. I don't That's have what that it power. sounds like to you. It does so, sound that way. I don't have the power to do that. Okay, so are, so please don't suggest it then. Because we, we came up with a lot of solutions. Are we getting a little ahead of ourselves here? Yeah. We don't we don't know who is interested in right. being on this board we yet. Don't. And I would assume that people are going to put in some kind of an application, letter some a letter of interest, which would go to Eric, mm -hmm. and then Eric, you would bring those letters of interest to us, mm -hmm. right? and from there, I think it would behoove. <laughs> certainly the select board, but it behooved the entire town to put together as objective a committee as possible. I think everybody would agree mm -hmm. on that. Um, and so then I, I would just, sorry, go ahead. Uh, yeah, just that, that's all I have to say. I would also add to that that it's 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 a committee and it's not there's there's going to be no decision making really. It'll Suggestion. be re recommendations and studies. Um, and really, like looking for solutions. So, That's how they work. Um, yeah. Yeah. I just want to put that out there. Julie, go ahead. Yes. Um, I know Dave Green, uh, the engineer, is also <clears throat> interested, and that might be very helpful to have an engineer on the board, on the committee. Mm -hmm. yeah. so. That's true. Let's see what we get for, for people that are willing to do it. We've thrown out some ideas for names, but we'll see what we get. We're, we don't want to put the cart before the horse. Do we have to do a motion for this? Do we get yes, a nomination from the board? Do we have? I ask for a motion. At this time, maybe not, but. What, what is there? Unless, he uh, said, do we need a nomination yeah. from the board? Yeah, are you throwing Don in there? Is that what you're doing? Yeah. I was thinking well, Jess. I, yeah, I was, I know Jess, <laughs> Jess yeah. expressed interest before I did, but I will, I will defer to her at a uh, later date. I, we could, I mean, we don't have to decide now. Do an arm wrestle no. or something? No. So you need a motion to formulate this committee? To form a committee. Yes. So you need the size of the committee, and you also need a report back date? If, if you want to wait on the size and wait to see what we get for interest, we won't have to do that. We won't have to do that. We can just vote to form a committee to investigate part. Of an, of, an odd, of an odd number. Yes, I'll make a motion that we um, formulate a committee to investigate 
parking in the town of Morristown. Second. In the village of Morrisville, actually. Okay, I have a motion by Don and a second by Judy. Is there any further discussion on this? I think the town was right there because it may be yes. it may push away out yes. there. Maybe down there. Right. Yeah. Okay. It could be something we could do. You want to make that? Box. It's all Morristown. Everything yes. we do is Morristown, even if it's in a village. Town of Morristown? Yeah. Thank you, Judy. All right. Okay. All in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion is passed unanimously. Uh, next, number eight, discuss rules for subordinate boards document, page 15 and 16. I think all we're doing is just the yellow. Yeah. That was the change written in by the village trustees for the last year. The, the changes they wanted to see. We're bouncing the ping pong ball back and forth, so the right. board needs to adopt their change, and we can actually formulate and accept the document. So what the trustees are doing is uh, we have a resonating with the planning council at the end of uh, the trustees are trying to do based on some feedback and myself really not having a planning council if I don't have a non-residents allowed. They're trying to, the trustees are very steadfast that they want these boards and committees to be town or village residents. However, they're willing to grandfather the existing members thereof in order to uh, ensure that we have some continent, continuity with the board and we can still function. They don't want to basically create a two-member planning council because of the fact that that's going to be pulled down. So what the little end note or footnote I can say in yellow says is that anyone who's currently on this year of year planning regardless of where they live now, regardless of where they live in the future, can be reappointed, serves, serves, is eligible to be reappointed. But those would be the last non-town residents to be appointed to boards and committees uh, with the language of this. Yes. I spoke to one of the trustees about it as well. Is and that, the, that's exactly right. Is the, uh, the footnote, where does it go in the body of the... Right the middle um, right the okay. Yeah, it's right in the middle. Hard to see it's so long. It's too oh, long. I see it. Okay, I found yeah. it. Thank you. Is everybody okay with that? Okay, or so you when I was asking that, it took me like a minute to find it too, and I wrote it. Yeah. Thank you. My, my concern, um, I, I appreciate the... I want to just first say I appreciate the village trustees um, being flexible um, in terms of um, looking more closely at the document and um, adding this um, footnote and amendment. So I, I want to preface my statement with that. Um, but I also am concerned that it may inadvertently create some sort of like nepotism where, you know, someone stays on the board, you know, I, I maybe that's too strong of a word, but then, so now we're grandfathering in certain people and privileging their membership on the board it seems a little arbitrary and I think it's, and I'm, I'm personally just for scrapping the whole, um, the whole residency and voter requirement. And that's where, that's where I'm coming from. Cause as I've said, there's, there's business owners who have a huge stakes in this town who, you know, who do not live here. Um, I can see both sides. Um, I, you know, I could even see a situation where someone might say, well, if, you know, if you're going to, require this then would you require every single person on the village trustees to be a, a, a village resident you know so there's a lot of i have a lot of issues with putting that stipulation um so although i appreciate the footnote i i won't be supporting this document either thank you Jess. Mm -hmm. jamie go ahead yeah um a couple of question comments um first do we know is there any way would alan come back if there was a way to think we're working with Alan ever come back. No. 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 Okay. All right. That's unfortunate. Um, mm -hmm. I'm in line with uh, with Jess that I personally would think that it would like to see it revert back to what it was. Uh, but if that can't happen, uh, I do have concerns, and I think I understand the way it's worded that if you're no, never mind. If someone, if someone is on the board now and they live in town, but they move out of town, that's it. They're done. Right. Okay. Yeah. I'll say. I I have yeah. a hard time too with that. I, I mean, I know personally probably a dozen folks that spend millions of dollars in Morristown but don't live here. You know, there's a lot of them out there, and I can I know lots of them that would love to serve on some of these and cannot. 
So go ahead, Laura. Um, well, I have served on both planning and GRP. Um, I've been on them since, I think, 2016. I have begged and asked multiple people to join the boards or run for select boards. Business owners continually tell me or residents say they do not want to serve because they are afraid of backlash and retaliation. Yeah. Um, everyone seems to think there's a list. There's no list. Mm -hmm. I'm not sure. Like I said, we beg people. Um, you, you know, to, I think, and I know that this has been an agenda of the um, Morrisville Power and Light because I have a particular letter dated in January from a trustee who, who expressed, did I know that there were out of state? So I think there has been an agenda from the Morrisville Power and Light. Um, I'm sorry to, to say that the select board kind of joined in on this because I'm not sure that you have the information, all the information needed. Um, I think a, an option could be that you have one out of town business owner allowed, um, it, assuming there aren't others. Um, you know, I have huge concerns that, that we've now become uh, a town that is quote, not business friendly. Um, and to have a very vital business owner who brought in 75,000 people to this town to be treated so um, disrespectfully. This was a, a person who knew that there was retaliation. There were incidences I've witnessed with the town when being part of the town plan, these business owners were trying to put things in that would benefit the businesses, that would in turn benefit the whole town. And I have seen them repeatedly bully and um, terrorized basically by trustee members. And it's a real shame because I do believe the trustees have an agenda to run Morrisville Power of Light. And I don't know that it benefits all of us. And by having another voice from the town businesses, I think really, really helps us. That being said, you've now told three members of the planning council they can't be on the board because they live from out of town. Speaking of nepotism, so we now have um, a trustee who sits on planning. Um, and we now have an employee of Morrisville Power and Light who sits on the DRB. There is no longer any separation, checks and balances. And to have members of one board sitting on the other boards, we might as well join forces and have one board because you have, by allowing um, trustees or employees of the Morrisville Power and Light to sit on these town boards, you've flown any kind of um, checks and balances, and it makes it very difficult, again, for any business owner, because, you know, you know that they're, they're not going to go against Morrisville Power and Life because they're a trustee or they're an employee. So I think if you're going to say no business owners, you need to go back um, and say, well, then you can't, we can't have trustees or Morrisville Power and Life serving on the board. There needs to be uh, clean accountability. Uh, and if you read, I have a statement from Attorney State about conflict of interest. To me, that's a very, very clear con conflict of interest. You guys have, we all have um, code of ethics that we're following. Um, the trustees do not. It puts, it just leaves it wide open. And we have trustees who are selling land to developers who are also issuing permits and yet you want to call out our businesses. So I, I think I would really encourage you to relook at this, see the, the agenda, and decide, do we want two boards? We do want one board. If we want one board, then let's go forward and get one board because we basically have one board right now. Thank you. Thanks, Laura. Go ahead, Brian. The, as far as I'm concerned, the Board of Trustees is totally different from us. They're, appointed and voted on 
to the village people. So we, I don't think we have anything to say on the table. Mm -hmm. But you appoint the planning and the so you appoint a trustee. We appoint them jointly. We appoint people of these boards jointly, but we are two separate, very we separate have boards. To say so, well, we meet on that, but not on what they do. Understood. Okay. And that's why I'm saying it should be separate. And I, again, I don't want to start fighting with them again. No. When I first got on the board, All right. the two were like this. We didn't even talk when to we each other. We started time. working together. I really want to keep working together if we can. So. Mm -hmm. well, not that you go wrong. Okay. Paul, we also have a, a statement. Yeah, I, I was going to read that too. Paul, go ahead. Hi, I'm Paul Trudell. Uh, I'm a member of the board of, uh, of the Development Review Board. And when I first heard about this at our last meeting, I was actually saddened because I really enjoy being on the board. Well, maybe enjoy is too strong of a word, but I like being on the board. I like what <laughs> <laughs> but when I, when I was applying to the board, it was called the Board of Adjustment. So I've been there a long time. Mm -hmm. uh, but anyway, when I first heard, I thought of that old Vermont adage, if it ain't broke, don't fix it. And then I was kind of upset a little bit because I'd be sad to leave the board. I've been there so long and to say I do enjoy it. I do like doing the work for, in Morrisville. But then I got this little draft here for the procedure and I saw the footnote on and that kind of made me feel a little bit better. Hopefully you would appoint me. Uh, I appreciate all the appointments you've done for me in the past years. Uh, even though I do live in Hyde Park, at least my body lives in Hyde Park, but my heart and soul live in Morrisville. <laughs> Thanks for all your service, Paul. Thank you. I'd urge you to support the, the written thing with the little footnote at the bottom. Thank you. We, we also have a, a message from uh, Tom and Christy Snip up there. It says that as our town grows, I think we need to keep our control local. How do our neighboring towns staff their boards? Does Stowe have non-residents serving on their boards? Question mark. Thank you, Tom, because that's my question, too. I've got it written right here on the side, you know. Yeah. Does, does, is Morristown represented in so on their DRB, on their planning council? Is Hyde Park represented? Right. Are we represented in Hyde Park? Are we represented in Johns? I honestly don't know the answers to these questions. Right. If somebody does, I'd love to hear them. But it's my, interesting because I, I just was listening to a select board meeting in Chittenden County of another town, and they're discussing exactly this, exactly this issue. And they haven't made a decision yet of how to do it. But down that way, there's a lot of big business and a lot of business owners. Right. And some people feel threatened to have a business owner serve on one of these boards. Right. So there's a lot of factors that, mm -hmm. that go with that. Uh, I, I don't know what to do. I don't know if you folks have any idea what you want. Well, I have another idea. I mean, <clears throat> and I don't know how viable it is, but uh, initially, I brought this to the attention of the board because I just wanted a list that was public of people who are interested in serving on boards. That's it. <laughs> um, if we voted this down, could it just revert back to what it was originally? Or are we, are, where are we at? It would have- Right now, both boards have voted to exclude anyone but residents. Okay. Village or town residents. So okay. that's where it stands. So okay. this is, this little footnote is an attempt at a peace offering just to grandfather right. the existing board members like Paul just over there. If you want to go further than that, you're going to need a working group or a country go back to them. the trustees because they are not going to move off that line. Okay. They were okay. very steadfast in that meeting. Okay. If you're not, to answer your question, Don, I don't believe there's any more still or more town residents in still. <coughs> so I'm pretty sure the answer is no. We can research that and confirm that. But mm -hmm. I mean, we have to operate with the trustees. These are the, the boards I staff are the two boards that are two headed monsters appointed by the village and the town because the village still has a say in zoning these. So you can't just say, oh, we want it this way, the select board. You've got to work with them to find a compromise right. language. Or form a compromise committee, form with the select board and the trustees, come to language that both boards can support. But as of right now, I'm the one person running the language back and forth and saying, well, this one wants this and this one wants that. We're trying to hold the middle ground. This is the attempt at the middle ground. Are you getting tired of it yet, Todd? I do spend a lot of nights going back and forth between <laughs> Morrisville and Morristown and accomplish really nothing. So yeah. I feel bad for the taxpayers. I, I don't mind. I'll survive. Jamie, go ahead. I, I was just going to say, and I believe I said it either two or four weeks ago, you know, if, if it goes back to the way it was, 
this board and the trustees ultimately have a decision made. So if someone is a good fit, you and they're from out of town, you could say, come on in. Right. But if you folks feel that they're from out of town and they're not a good fit, you could say, well, thanks for playing, we're gonna go someplace else. So you don't really need to have that language in there. I don't, because the decision is ultimately up to you folks. Mm -hmm. Well, I was, and if, I, if it and is a broke room, fix it too. And I think hypocritical of, of the trustees who can have members that don't live in the village as village trustees. That seems a little bit hypocritical right. to me. I was always surprised by that. You know, at, at one point, someone had talked about me becoming a trustee before I was on here, and and I lived just outside the village, so it's like, oh no, no, can't do that. You know, it's like you actually can. The no. Villages are run by a charter, right? And so it's in the charter. You just have to be a town resident, right? You just have to be able to go check this, right? That's why I'm saying I think it's hypocritical that you know, they're complaining this way. But. Kathy, then Julie. I'm thinking about my own business. I run home health. I work for a board. My board has to be 51% of my board has to be comprised of people that receive service. Right. So is there any way to like rewrite bylaws because you have to follow the bylaws, whatever they say, that such a percentage of the people have to be Morrisville residents? Because I agree, there's a lot of business owners that don't live here in town that probably have a lot to say and a lot of valuable information. I also know how hard it is to get people to join boards. Mm -hmm. It's difficult. It's a big commitment and people don't want to do it. So if there are people that do, how do you get them to fit in is my... Right. And younger people, it's hard mm -hmm. to get them at all. So if we can be flexible on how we get some of these 30 and 40 year olds and younger right. on these boards right now is where I'm kind of it's coming from in my own world. Yeah. But this, this conversation started actually at my first meeting. Yeah, and it was because the feeling was that we just automatically reappointed people to the same positions without any thought about anybody else, about applications, about who else might be interested. And that's where it really began. Mm -hmm. It is. And mm -hmm. I believe you brought that up, Jess. Mm -hmm. And so that's kind of, in, you know, it's kind of interesting that we're still That's, talking about it. <laughs> yeah, we're, we're still talking about it, but we started in a very, very different context. It was like, whoa. We're it's a reorganization. Gonna, we're maybe. just going to reappoint everybody no matter what. And that's where, where it all began without any thought about, I think it's, well, I will say without little thought on, on my part as my, at my first meeting about what was going on. Um, I personally like this language. I like this language because it makes sense to me. Forgetting about all the other stuff that has been suggested, a lot of it, some of it politics, uh, it just makes sense that people in Morristown sit on Morristown boards. It's just like it makes sense to me that people in Stowe sit on Stowe boards. We have regional boards. We have LCPC. We have, we have ways to get representation on other boards that have larger constituencies. But these, this is our planning council. This is our DRB. This is our... Conservation Commission, um, and it makes sense that that we have representation, our own representation on there. Um, it, also. also, I would just add, it, it's it was suggested. I've heard people talk about Morristown being a small town. Morristown's not a small town. We're in the top ten percent of towns in Vermont now. We're a relatively large town, population wise, and I really like the idea of saying, okay, folks don't like the way things are, here's a vacancy, here's a place to go. And, um, and do, what, do what needs to be done. I'm sitting here in part because of that. You know, I was pushed to do something, you know, and, and I did, I stepped up. This is the last place I thought it was gonna be a year ago. Yeah, Or even six months ago. Yeah. And so, but I am, and I'm very happy to be here. Don't get me wrong. Yeah. I've, I've really enjoyed working with everybody in this room. The people in this t that are working for this town are, are fantastic. People on this board are fantastic. But if you don't create a vacancy, then these people aren't going to be aren't going to be able to step up. And that's where this conversation began. It began with there are no vacancies. So how in the world can we expect people to get on the planning council if we don't provide the opportunities? 
And if we're going to continue, I, I have no problem with grandfathering. I think Paul Trudell is a, 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 a fantastic addition to DRB. I sat in on one of their meetings. I sat in on a planning council meeting. I, I agree the membership there is great, but I, I got to tell you, I, I just I just think this makes sense, this language. And also we've had people come to our meetings and ask why are why are there people from other communities on our sitting on our committee? Yeah. So that was that was another impetus. Yeah, I I know Julie had a comment and then Laura, but I wanted to read what Christy Snip said because it's been ringing in my ear. My wife has said this so many times; it's not funny. Everyone is welcome to attend meetings and give their feedback. You don't need to have a board seat to have input. Mm -hmm. She tells me that almost every time she listens to these meetings, every single one. Yeah. And people are talking about this, and she's right, because more often than not, somebody that says something from the gallery makes a change with us. Mm -hmm. Happens all the time. And I remember when I, I used to attend meetings before I got involved myself, and I'd say something, and it would spur all this information, oh, we haven't thought of that, or, or we have thought of that, and this is why. You don't have to be on the board. Just come to meetings, you know? But anyways, Julie. Yes, I just, uh, you know, when there was all kinds of negative stuff on the front porch forum about our building, we got comments, probably 70 comments from people in the community from Hyde Park and Elmore and Hardwick and Wolcott and all kinds of places around here. And they all said, well, I said, you know, tell the board what you think. Tell them, mm -hmm. well, we don't have a voting right. People don't speak up because they don't think they have a voting right. Now, right. I, don't, I think I agree with Don. People in this town should run this town. But it seems to a lot of people that they don't have any rights in this town already. So, you know, mm -hmm. I don't think you're changing anything either way. Because already people think that's how it is. That's true. Laura, go ahead. So, I, you know, again, having served on these boards, I would say that I would encourage you to, first of all, find out who's interested and what are your plans when, again, the business owners don't want to come because they are afraid of retaliation, which having this happen. It's very much out there in the business now that they're afraid of that. So I would encourage you to put it out there, see who comes. Because I can tell you from 2016, I've been begging people. So what are your plans going forward? And currently with it stands, we would have the only people that would be on planning would be Etienne and Tom Snip, who's a trustee from Morrisville Town and Light. We can't have a quorum. We will be down now uh, if Paul Paul were to go off, Christy Snip would step in, who's an employee for uh, Morrisville Power and Light. We do have an alternative, which is the first time we've ever had that, but he's made it very clear, uh, Donnie Blake, that he does not want to be full-time. So I think you guys need to anticipate that, um, you know, again, I think having been on it, I'm seeing it from a different side, that I don't think there's all these people that want to join. Uh, you know, they'll step up and be on select board, and a lot of times these people running for select board haven't been to any of these meetings. There's a real downside when you bring in a very new person to any of these boards who don't have some history, and that's why the, the business owners are so important, because they have history, they've dealt with all these zoning, and they've dealt with all the laws, so when they get on these boards, they're incredibly valuable because they're bringing in insight, and especially, uh, uh, statement and it's very time consuming. So think ahead about what, what's going to happen if we have two planning members and don't have enough people. So when people come to the DRV and they cannot get a permit because we don't have enough people to do to vote. So just I encourage you to think about that because we've been there like well, I and this good there and that is, that is how these out of towners actually got on the board was because we couldn't get anybody. Thanks, Laura. So be very careful how quickly we can act. So where are we at and what do we want to do? I mean, I guess the, the another option would be to um, 
form some kind of committee to revise this so that you know if if we would consider what Laura is saying um, you know if there is a situation where the spots can't be filled by um, town or village residents slash voters then we can look outside um, I don't know if that would be a compromise that the village would will be or the, the village trustees would be willing to um, to entertain. I don't want to speak for the trustees, but I think okay. that's pretty reasonable. Okay. I mean, they're they're very adamant that they want this to town start the with, village run mm -hmm. by the town and village residents. Mm -hmm. However, if no one steps up to fill these seats, which is a big possibility, I mean, uh, the planning council needs to be seven or five because right. we get two empty seats per year. So the, the, there is there is no long line of people waiting to fill these seats. They're unpaid jobs. They're 10 hours a month. Uh, there are multiple meetings a month, if not more, when you talk to Ed Dame, who's on this meeting tonight. I mean, this is, he already meets with me for four hours a month and comes to select one meeting too, just because he's a planning council chair. So, so I think if you added that sentence, I think that would probably fly with the trustees on Wednesday night. If no other rep village or town residents uh, step up to serve, the select board of trustees made them look to fill an open seat with a uh, non- and to add to that, I think that's a good way to go. And I do agree with the assumption that you're going to be reappointed. So how about uh, announce when the reappointments are happening, and then you have a pool of people that the select board and trustees decide on rather than just an automatic. That would that would open it up, so it wouldn't seem as though it's an automatic. I would be. I think that would be a good solution. So Todd, I thought you said that um, if we change it here, it's not going to work with the trustees. Well, I'm going to go back to the trustees on Wednesday. This is the trustees' language. Okay. They they voted this. So if you guys vote this language with the with that footnote tonight, it would stand. We're done. We're done. The policy is amended. We're good. Okay. If you ever make an additional amendment and send the ping pong ball back up to the village offices, I'll present said ping pong ball on Wednesday. We'll see where that gets bat around to, and when I come back here. And you say like you're. You read on it, not you know, not that you have a crystal ball. Is that the trustees would probably be amenable to that change? That's not, I think adding it that sounds reasonable. If no other, if no other town village residents uh, show up to serve within a certain re period of time. I think it's only fair for other people to fill the boards. And ultimately, I need to run the business of the town. I need warm bodies in the seats. If I don't have warm bodies, this town doesn't function. So mm -hmm. I think that's totally reasonable. Judge. I think it's a good, good option. Mm -hmm. I think also answers the question that some residents have brought up. Why are other people from other communities sitting on our boards? And we have it in black and white that this is the option, and we had to go with the option. Yeah, because it's crickets. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So do you want to do an amendment to the, to this and so we can bring it to the trustees? Sure. Um, <clears throat> I propose to amend the language um, on the jointly appointed subordinate boards uh, to read if... Um, if no other eligible uh, resident, as outlined here, um, steps up for uh, a vacancy, then um, the, the legislative bodies can look outside of the town of Morristown. Yeah, I, mean, it was on, I would add one month on there or something. Okay, like okay. It's not like, oh, yeah. no one showed up yesterday. Like, yes, yeah. okay. That's, that's good, Jess. Well, well, okay. That's okay. good. Okay. Doesn't that put it back where it was? Almost. Almost, but Almost. that way. No, but it but we says can't, we, that's the way to change it now. It says yeah. we start it, we start yeah. with a villager town. Yeah. And then if nobody steps up. Right. Yeah. You know, we, they, we, yeah, we, I'm all right with it. Day one, I kept telling this a lot I'm of fine people. With it. I mean, how many we've been down two for how many years? You know, and we're trying to kick people off. Yeah. And uh, if we got good people, you know, we we when we have our board, we all know who's here and who's doing what. And, when you got good people, you don't want to eliminate them if you can help it. Yeah, I personally like the compromise language. Good. Okay. I admit, I feel like I'll yeah. 13 years I've been here, I have the best Thank planning you. council I've ever had right now. I've got a really strong board. They do excellent work. Had. Yes. Had. Had. I had one. I'm down one. With Julie. No, with, no, with no new member in sight. So, compromise <coughs> language works if uh, I guess you'd have to make, make a motion to. Amended as proposed, as just proposed, mm -hmm. and then it passes, and then you can formally vote on the, uh, the modified document. As just proposed, is with the uh, additional language of um, within one month. Yeah. And then, yeah. Yeah. Julie, I, good I to come. Say that to okay, thanks.
Can, for the record, can you explain what is the process? Because this is being televised. I don't know that everyone knows how you get on the board. Usually there's a posting for, from a vacancy and was asked to, to contact the town of Morristown, the, the town administrator's the office. Simple email. Hey, Judy, this is Joe Schmo. I'm interested. Whatever street. I saw there was a DRB vacancy. I'm interested. Can you tell me more about it? That's all it takes to get on the list. So right. That's the typical response. Yes. It says, um, village and town residents interested, I'm just reading from the document, um, interested in serving on a jointly appointed subordinate board, shall email the town's administrative assistant, admin at morristownvt.org, regarding interest in filling said vacancy. And there's more to it than that, but that's the official. And the best thing they can do is come in here and sit during the meeting. That's it. And talk, talk to them. I sat for months before I ran. Yeah, for you do. Months. When I first got on, I came to see what is about before mm -hmm. I got on. I went to all the meetings. <clears throat> just, to be, just to be clear, the, whoever is interested then has to go before a, an interview and voting process before the select board and the trustees. Correct. So it's not just an email. Just a, like the email email starts the process moving. Thank you. Yeah. But then both boards have to, by majority, approve the candidate for the candidate to be seated. If one board doesn't approve the candidate, the candidate candidacy fails. Right. David, you had a comment. So, I, so Todd just answered the question I had. Which boards are you talking about? The DRB and the um, planning trustees council. or planning. the yes. planning, planning, planning and yes. the select board? Yeah. No, it's DRB no. and planning. DRB and planning. Those are the two those are the boards, boards that appoint the two people. The, the the two conservation. Two appointed. Conservation. Yeah. Conservation, conservation committee. That's not jointly appointed. Morristown Development Fund. Okay. Who does so that? That's who appoints the two appointments. Planning and DRB is appointed by the select board and the village trustees. That's what, that's my question. Those are the only two boards. All the other boards, the committees, the select board, we do it. are creatures of the select board solely. Planning and zoning, because the village is a municipality, <laughs> when we operate in a joint fashion, both boards have to act in, in the same fashion. You have the joint town plan, joint zoning bylaws, joint board. So it adds a wrinkle of uh, uh, interest or some difficulty, depending on your perspective. Right. So the, in All order right. for the, a person to get appointed, it has to be a With joint agreement on, by both boards or a majority of both majority boards. Each board. Majority so of each board. What was the question about the board of trustees being loaded with people from water and light, and how does that affect the appointees? Is there an effect that? No. Is this, is this? It's not germane to this language. Yeah. OK. Yeah. All right, so we have a motion on the floor and a second. Is there any further discussion about it? All in favor say aye. Aye. Any opposed? Motion is passed. That's Thanks, Todd. That's a motion to amend. We can now move the document as amended. Okay. Is there a motion to amend the minutes? Second. 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 <laughs> Are you sure? All in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion is passed unanimously. I'll pass something up tomorrow. I'll send it to Jess and CC Eric to make sure I captured what you said, Jess. Mm -hmm. And then I'll head over to the trustees on Wednesday night and see how it is. Okay, thanks. Thanks, Todd. Um, thank you, Todd. Bounce that ping pong and, ball back. And thank you to Laura and, and um, Christy. Yeah, thanks for everybody Paul, that's involved yeah. in the conversation. I mean, this is what, what helps run the town you know it's not it's not just the people here on this side of the table at all you know i've seen that more and more it's it's everybody and anyone that's up there and it's great <clears throat> all right next we have old business is there anything for old business um, no, no. Noise. noise noise or oh oh i tried to skip over that no. one. <laughs> that was another one of those things that takes a long time <laughs> that was number three that takes a long time <laughs> i can't work this is just here for information, right? We, this is a lot to read. I, I got one of those documents right after the other two came today. Let's play the one that's happening on Friday the weekend. There was a three sample. I didn't see them. I haven't seen them. This is Burlington so Middlebury here yeah. in Hartford. I looked at them. So That's one. Um, the three towns. Oh, okay. Homework. Okay. So we don't have to talk about it. Oh. 
It's FYI right now. It was passed out tonight. Well, there are three different samples from around the state. Hartford, there Brown, it is right there. and Middlebury. Yeah. Right. And One, two, three, we right have there. nuances specific to the community. We're trying, Hartford is surprisingly much longer than Brown. I was really shocked at that one. Um, Middlebury right? reflected uh, more or less, I think, where you folks are looking to go. But I think there are pieces of each one of them that might assist you or assist us here more so. Um, so I, I give you all three to consider. And I mean, if you're gonna if you're gonna recraft the noise ordinance, let's do it once and do it right the first time. And are we didn't we do something already to allow the businesses to extend their hours on the weekends? No. 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 The, okay. the conversation was was uh <laughs> it was very broad reaching but no it was you, you can't there's a process for changing ordinance or adopting new ordinance and it starts with revenue information and then drafting the language and once you're happy with the language then we vote to adopt the ordinance and that starts in 98 clock during which voters have the ability to gather petitions to uh, oppose the ordinance change. And then there's a process from there where I'm not sure if it's going to be done like much time in the right area. So, information, uh, uh, which is digested for a couple of weeks, and the Zoom meeting will bring it back to Zoom business and uh, then see what you think. See if there's a high points and low points, and then we will take our current noise ordinance, add or subtract whatever we're supposed to decide. And our noise ordinance is on our website somewhere. Mm -hmm. They are. Yeah. So, more to follow. Further more to follow. It's a, it's, well, it's a big deal when you change your ordinance. Right. Yeah. Because there's enforcement behind it. Right. right. And so, so let Jason do his job. Right. It's not being done lightly. There's time all in here. But uh, to hurry it is a mistake. So right. Yeah. Agreed. Right Agreed. What's surprising to me is that Burlington's, I, I'm just flipping through, that Burlington's noise ordinance isn't really that different than ours. Their, their hours, they have quiet hours from 10 p.m. to 7 a.m., but then you think of, you know, what it sounds like on Church Street. And I'm just curious to know where the difference between, you know, the letter of the law and then the and enforcement. The enforcement, enforcement, yeah, yeah. right. Yeah. Um, and Burlington's got some, what the waiver is, what the fine is. And one reads here, I didn't see that in it. And then the Middlebury one, I think it's a lot. Yeah. 1,000. Mm -hmm. Ouch. First offense, right? And then Hartford um, employs a. Um, I, I, the, I the gave the Hartford specifically, I came from the LCT. Yeah. That one employs the use of a decimeter. Uh, a decimeter. decimeter. Um, and I'm advising you against that. Yeah. I think it's a bad practice. I can tell you, and then one of the reasons why is that these farms are required to keep them calibrated. Nobody else is. So if I'm a business owner, I have my own decimeter, and yours says I'm over, and mine says I'm under. They don't have to have their. They're pretty device. simple devices, though. Those these things are simple. In fact, you'll see in the Hartford language in there how they have to have them calibrated. So you take away a little bit of subjectiveness to it, but it, it does. That's a simple thing, though. Thank you for this, Eric. This is good. Yes, thank you. Thank you. Can we? Do we have extra copies of these, or can I? I can run and make them. Yeah, I mean, you need for tonight for for. Yeah, no, she, for, she didn't get copies. I didn't get copies. I only got. Oh, no, it was under mine. Was it was all years. part of. It, it came out at the very this. beginning of the meeting. I didn't get it. You didn't get yeah, it. Yeah, it was under the under no, the. Yeah, topic. mine was under that. Yeah. Yeah, and I didn't realize it. Thank you. Yep. Thanks. This is yours. Well, thank you. Thanks for bringing thank that you. out. Yeah, you are on point. <clears throat> thank you. All right, should we move on? The old business. Is there any old business? Approve the warrants. Don't move. So I would ask you, <laughs> Ryan, I love the way you're trying to move this movie. Uh, both of our clients, 
uh, and please are out sick. They were not here today to prepare the warrants for you to review. Therefore, I would ask for the motion from the board to allow Bob to sign on behalf of the board. Uh, as soon as they return to work and get the warrants ready for signatures. And do you know when that's going to be? Uh, one of them will be back probably mid to late week this week. Because I'm leaving Friday no, for Europe. Not until you sign the warrants. <laughs> <laughs> Yep, it doesn't need to be the chair and the vice chair. Okay, well that, yeah. We could have so Judy. I can that. Why don't you so move, move that. that she can sign? Yeah. yeah. Okay. So I have a motion. Do I have a second? I have a second. Second by Jess. All in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion is passed unanimously. Good job, Judy. Thank you. Actually, I'll have something else for you, too because I'm not going to be back when I'm supposed to be back. <clears throat> anyway, next TA report, Eric. Yes, uh, I'm happy to advise after advertising internally, uh, Matt Fredericks was selected from within our highway department to be the second form for the highway department. Uh, it was not a hire, it was simply a, a switch of staff as he came from within the union and is now a uh, foreman outside the union and uh, he is leading the village crew, but the uh, efforts here going forward are for he and Scott, as the four persons for the highway department, they will be in the one of them can step into the other's roles and perform them uh, and manage the personnel very well. It takes us to a point we've been trying to achieve, Dan tried to achieve for many years, was to put the structure in place so that our superintendent, who I can tell you I have been dumping things on recently because uh, much of my last year that learning curve for both of us because Dan served as superintendent for so many years and did a lot of this stuff on his own we were both in, in uh, unknown large so uh, we have attended meetings together we have applied for grants together we have done an amazing amount of work this past year on highly related issues trying to catch us up uh, I encourage you to talk about the road erosion inventory that's going to take place this year. That's the tax payers in our budget. That is absolutely necessary to keep us in good graces of the state, keep us moving forward. Um, but Kevin is now going to be shouldering that responsibility as superintendent. He has two very good uh, foremen at this point, and uh, I have complete faith and confidence that they'll be able to uh, execute what they need to do and keep uh, Kevin working on grants. And are you happy with that, Kevin? I am. You're still here. <laughs> I'm still here. Good job. Um, on the uh, ninth of this month, we participated in a webinar hosted by the Mothers of Cities and Towns, which is on the Declaration of Inclusion. Uh, that included all the leadership within our community that was that was in state. We had a couple of people that were on vacation and not available. Uh, there were townists here in the building that attended that, and we went into breakout sessions. It was, uh, a, it was very, very good. Uh, we started early because I wanted to just speak to, to everybody as to really where we were headed. This is unknown territory for a lot of us, and, and talking about uncomfortable conversations and, and getting to where they are in one country. So um, it, it was a great webinar. Afterwards, we stayed in here for another 45 minutes. Discuss what we heard and uh, what other communities are doing, and I, I think it was a great, uh, a great beginning point for us. And I think uh, we will we'll take this training because I have access to the video, uh, and we'll slowly work it through uh, town staff uh, each department at a time. And uh, I'll be there to answer questions. But the long and the short of it is, it doesn't care no matter how many earrings you have or what color your hair is what your gender identity is, it's okay to be in Marksville and be welcome to everyone. So uh, it was really an awesome thing. Is there any way that, I know you sent um, information out to us and I couldn't participate. Is there any way we can hear the video? Oh, sure. Right? I can make the video available. Okay, thank you. I have another video available for you too. It's a three hour select work for training on how to run an effective meeting. Oh. No joke intended. It's seriously a, it came out, I uh, enrolled in it just so we could have access to the video. You have to participate in order to get access. So 
Okay. And we'll have that available too. So we have three hours on the plane. <laughs> How to make them last three hours? Is that it? <laughs> no. I think we have that down. But we have that down. <laughs> You'll have more than three. <laughs> uh, Tuesday, I joined Brent Tan on Ron Stanford and Dave Stevens with the Conservation Commission on the Brian Hall Road. Uh, we met with representatives of the State Forest and Parks. The parking lot project is moving along, and the RFP was about targeted for November and July 1st. So the work there, but as the state lands we're working on, all documents have to be reviewed by the state. I have a contact person for that project. Um, so the RFP needs to go through them for clearance and then back out for contractors. Um, they do not have any funding available. Uh, their funding requests have to go by February. And by the looks of where the grants were awarded out of their funding this year, this one would have been funded anyway. Uh, so the, the funding is going to come from Conservation Commission funds, and uh, we'll get this, get this uh, parking lot built. We can get the cars off from the road and out of the way of the landowners, the private landowners that surround that area, uh, get blocked out of their, their access points because people park where they have to uh, Great entrance point to our town forest. Is that, that's the one we voted on a while ago, isn't it? It is. Okay. You voted on the license. All right. You approved the license, right. Um, last Friday, we met with interested contractors for the building um, renovations here. Uh, phase one, so to speak, this year is basically a lot of external as well as the air conditioning system. Uh, we bring you uh, good proposals here in the near future. I'm hoping for the next meeting so that it's ready to go as soon after the first as possible so that everyone's ready to. Reshift for personnel. That's all I have. All right, Eric. Any questions for Eric from the board or anybody? Is yes. that the whole building or just upstairs? Just the upstairs. Oh, the whole building. <laughs> yes. yes, please. All right. Thanks, Eric. <clears throat> Next is select board concerns. Don? Not much. Um, I attended a conservation commission meeting the other night and. Uh, Nice introduction to that group and the work that they're doing. Very good. Great. Judy. As I mentioned before, I'm involved with the Working Communities Challenge of Lamoille, and it's a housing work group. And we're looking at, I'm, I'm just attending, I'm not providing any information. And um, uh, Dan Noyce uh, shared with us about the ARPA money coming in, but nobody has any information on how it's going to be, can be spent. and. I think there's a time frame to it. it has to be spent by 2026 and it, it's not very further much. Out from there. <laughs> what? Even further out than that. Is it? They pushed the timeline down further. Okay, good. Yeah. Um, Dan just wasn't clear on on, the, on all of that, on the criteria. Um, but it's an interesting group and in looking at housing and, and zoning and so on and so forth. So I'll come back and share what I can when we have these meetings. We meet uh, every other month. Sounds good. And what was the name of it again? It's called Working Communities Challenge of Lamoille. Okay. Is that it? That's it. Thank you. All right. Jess. I do not have any concerns today, believe it or not. <laughs> Good job. <laughs> Brian. How are we coming out on the fifth? Uh, we're holding back at this point. All documents have been submitted. Uh, actually, the commission has it reviewed. Uh, so find the bank are done and then we can we can do it or we just have to wait for them to contact us. So I have one question about the pit. We haven't been allowed in there quite a while. We haven't been allowed to <coughs> we haven't been allowed to mine. We can go into our pit, but we can't mine any material out of it. So the activities can still go on up there. We are, we are going to start the reclaiming activities. I don't even mean about the gravel pit. I, I heard there was an incident up there the other night. I was thinking, if we're shut down, we can't get a pit. How come anybody else can? If they can't, right? Well, one doesn't have anything to do with the other. Recreational uh, activities don't. So I think the pit is closed and we get closed. Oh, I'm not sure why that's part of that. <laughs> part of that 250. Okay. Okay. That's it. All right. And I just found out tonight that I'm not going to be back for our next meeting. Which is the 31st, right? No, no, no the 6th. Okay, I will be back for that. So we're not going to have one until the 
six. Black. Because so we've had we got two this month already. Two weeks. Yeah, okay. Got it. I will be here then. And that's all I have. Next, any other business? I just wanted to share that taxes were due today at four, and um, there are ARPA funds for people that are struggling paying their tax bills or um, paying their utility bills. We don't know a lot about it, but I have that information, and I just wanted to share in the public forum. There's a link that I put in the community newsletter that's on the website. So it only, it's only taxes and electric bills? That, I think so. Um, it's run through the DHSA. I think it's who the ARPA fund is. Money gets it follow through. So in theory, there doesn't have to be any delinquent taxes then? Right, so um, Jim Barlow actually wrote letters to the um, five properties that were sold at tax sale and um, on our behalf and let those five um, homeowners know, our property owners know that there were these funds available to help with um, delinquent tax sales, the properties that have been sold to. That's great. Did you say VFHA? Uh, v VHFA? Yeah, VHFA. I'm pretty sure they're the ones that the, the, the ARPA money is being funneled through. But if people have questions, they can contact me and I can get better information. And okay. um, water and light knows about it too, so it's also for water and sewer bills in there. Um, people can also get assistance with with that. Thank you. All right. Any other business? I would move to go in executive session because I find that premature general public knowledge would clearly place the public body or a person involved at a substantial disadvantage. I make a motion to enter an executive session to discuss the appointment or employment or evaluation of a public officer or employee subject to T1 VSA paragraph 313 article A section 3 to include the town administrator Eric Dodge and the interim police chief Jason Lewis. Second. I have a motion by Judy and a second by Don. Any further discussion? All in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Thank you. Thanks for coming, folks. I need you to stop.